So, a good day to everyone. So, last uh, video lecture on 161 on dairy uh, animal production, I've talked about the selection and culling of dairy animals and then I've talked about the, uh, on the new chapter, I've talked about the digestive um, system of dairy animals. So, basically, when we say digestive system of dairy animals, it is the same with that of ruminants since with uh, like goats and uh, sheep and cattle, beef cattle, since dairy, dairy animals and yung mga uh, beef uh, cattle, mga meat type na goats, they are all considered as ruminants. So, uh, basically, in my discussion, I've talked a little bit on it since I know that you've tackled this on your previous subjects. So, for this, again, uh, topic, I'm going to talk about the nutritional requirements of dairy cattle. So, uh, I'm aware that you are all fourth year, so alam ko na natakil na ito nung third year kayo, specifically on animal nutrition. So, so, itong um, video lecture na ito, uh, more on like parang concentrating on the dairy cattle. So, I will not be, I will not uh, discuss what is protein, what is carbohydrate, mga ganun. So, I will be uh, concentrating mostly on yung mga sa dairy cattle. So, I expect na yung mga um, yung mga definition, yung mga principles on energy, on protein and carbohydrates, ay alam nyo na and uh, if hindi, then you could um, browse yung mga previous lectures ninyo on animal nutrition. So, uh, with that, I'm going to talk about the nutritional requirements of dairy cattle. So, first, uh, we're going to talk about the feed intake of dairy cattle. So, under nearly all practical management conditions, dairy cows and growing dairy heifers are fed ad lib. So, dapat um, ad lib yung pagpapakain dito sa mga dairy cows and as well as the growing dairy heifers. So, we need to feed them ad lib ito. So, when you practice voluntary feed intake, uh, it could limit, it is a major limitation to the nutrient supply in dairy cattle. Since when we say dairy cattle, dapat uh, they are undergoing lactation. Kasi dun ka lang makakakuha ng milk. So, when they are undergoing lactation, uh, mas higher yung nutrients na kailangan nila. So, kailangan na ad libitum yung pinapakain natin sa kanila. Kasi pag you practice voluntary feed intake, uh, it could limit, may limit lang pag voluntary feed intake, may limit lang yung nutrient supply na pwedeng makuha ng dairy cattle. So if uh, nalilimitan or may limitation yung supply na, ng nutrients dun sa dairy animal, then it could affect the production. It could lower the production. So uh, it is... Um, necessary na uh, for dairy animals, especially dairy cows, uh, uh, on my example, because these are, to yung parang may sikat, so mas sikat itong mga to, compared to yung goat and buffalo, mas maraming references na nakukuha. So, dapat uh, ad lib. Same with dairy goats and say, uh, dairy buffalo, dapat ad lib. Kasi kailangan nila ng maraming nutrients. So, uh, feed intake is usually characterized as dry matter intake. So, yung uh, parang interchangeable ito. So, when we say dry matter intake, it, this is yung feed intake. Uh, para ma-compare yung diet of variable moisture concentration. Kasi, um, dun sa diet, yung parang kinukuha lang is yung dry matter intake. Kasi, yung pag in tinake into account mo pa yung mga moisture content dun sa feed uh, mahihirapan ka nang i-compute yung uh, feed intake niya kasi uh, variable so when we say variable uh, hindi isa lang yung amount or hindi isa lang yung 
value ng moisture content doon sa um, feed. So, iba-iba yan. Every feed stuff, iba-iba yung moisture content. Every leaf na ipinapakain mo, iba-iba yung moisture content. So, it, is, uh, it varies talaga. So, mahirap ang kang i-compute talaga yung uh, feed intake niya. So, uh, usually, ine-express yung feed intake as dry matter intake. Then, The body size, milk production, and stage of lactation or gestation are the major animal factors when it comes to sa dry matter intake. Kasi yung dry matter intake, it is affected by both animal and feed factor. So, yung animal factor, body size, milk production, and stage of lactation. And then yung feed factor, meron ka nung mga concentrates, mga ganun. May mga iba't ibang feeds dyan. So, yun yung uh, mga factors that will affect the dry matter intake. So, at peak yung dry matter intake or the feed intake of the uh, animal. So, uh, for example, here is yung cow. Yung daily DMI of high producing cows may be 5% of body weight. And even higher in ext extremely high producing cows. So, sinasabi daw na yung dry matter intake <coughs> ng mga cows, ng mga lactating cows, yung mga high producing cows, it can be 5% of its body weight. And even higher in extremely high producing cows. So, ganun karami yung daily DMI niya. So, like for example, if yung daily cow is nasa 1,250 kilograms yung Um, weight niya eh yung DMI niya dapat is 5% of that 1,250 kg so talagang marami yung kinakain niya this is for high producing cows ah. then mas higher pa if uh, the cows are uh, extremely high producing so baka nasa 6%, 7%, 8% ng uh, total body weight niya as is expressed as DMA, ay DMI. So, baka ganun karami, ganun kabigat yung kinakain. So, again, this is uh, for cows. So, basically, same principle rin doon sa dairy goats and dairy bopalos. Mga nandun rin, na, nasa reach, range rin na ganito, nasa 5%. Pero I cannot find any references, good references of it. Pero same principle, marami talagang kinakain. Uh, marami talaga yung dry matter intake sa lahat ng dairy animals. Then, more typical peak uh, of DMI values are in the range of 3.5% to 4% of body weight. So, this is parang yung normal when nasa normal production lang ng daily cows, uh, nasa 3.5% and 4% to 4% of body weight uh, yung DMI niya. So, in mature cows, DMI as a percentage of body weight is lowest during the non-lactating or, or dry period. So, sinasabi daw na uh, it is lowest during the non-lactating or dry period. So, pag hindi na nagpro-produce ng uh, milk yung animal, hindi siya lactating, pag non-lactating or dry siya, uh, doon mo makikita yung lowest DMI. So, this can be the same to daily goats and daily buffaloes. Since they are both uh, lactating, they are both producing milk. So, pag uh, yung animal is non-lactating na or nasa dry period na, either cow, uh, goat, or buffalo, pero itong example ko is on cow, pero lahat sila, lowest yung DMA pag hindi sila, nag, pag hindi sila lactating, pag hindi sila nagpro-produce ng uh, milk. So, in most cows again, DMI declines to its lowest rate in the last 2 to 3 weeks of gestation. So, yun. Bumababa daw sa lowest week in the last 2 to 3 weeks of gestation. Doon sa before mga nak. Typical DMI during this period is less than 2% of body weight per day. So, yung normal is nasa 3% to 4%. 
Pero pag uh, nasa 2 to 3 weeks of gestation, uh, yung typical DMI niya is around less than 2% of body weight. After calving, DMI increases as milk production increases. So, yun. After mga anak, then lactating na siya, yung DMI will also increase as milk production increases. Which is also true, although uh, hindi ko uh, in-example dito, sa cow ko lang in-example, it is also true to the other dairy animals such as goat and buffalo. So, basically, lowest rin yung gestation nila during yung 2 to 3 weeks of gestation, last 2 to 3 weeks, pero it varies to animal species, pero ganun rin, naglo-low, nagiging low rin yung uh, DMI nila, and then after nilang calving, after kidding, mag-increase rin yun. Since, mag-increase yung DMI, since uh, the production of milk also increases, kasi lactating ka na. So, yun. So, the required um, energy concentration is a... So, we're going to talk about the energy na nung sa animal. So, the required dietary energy concentration is a function of the energy requirement and the feed intake rate. So, yung uh, parang involve yung energy requirement uh, and yung feed intake rate para malaman mo yung... Uh, dietary energy concentration na kailangan mong ibigay. So, um, calculated requirements for dietary energy concentration typically are very high in early lactation. So, because the rate of milk production is high relative to feed intake rate. So, sinasabi nila sa mga dairy animals, yung dietary energy concentration daw, typically, mas mataas during early lactation, kung kapapanganak pa lang yung animal, yung dairy animal, uh, during early lactation niya, mataas yung dietary energy con concentration na kailangan niya because yung rate ng milk production niya mataas pero yung feed intake niya uh, mababa relative to its feed intake rate. So, hindi naman mababa yung uh, feed intake niya pero uh, when compared doon sa milk production niya, talagang mataas. Mataas yung uh, milk production when compared to the feed intake rate. So, with that, kailangan niya ng maraming energy. Kailangan niya ng uh, ha, very high na energy concentration. Yung dairy animal, specifically or especially uh, during yung early stage ng lactation. So, in general, diets with energy concentration which is less than 1.71 to 1.76 mcal or yun yung pag-express natin ng energy per kilogram do not contain adequate fiber to support good rumen health and function. So, sinasabi daw na yung mga uh, energy concentration, yung sa diet which is less than 1.71 to 1.76 and calories per kilogram hindi yun sapat para masupport yung good rumen health and function doon sa animal so tas yung mga dairy cows in early lactation it can typically cannot meet their energy requirements are and are expected to lose weight so yun uh, for dairy cows in early lactation daw uh, hindi niya talaga ma parang hindi niya talaga mamimit yung energy requirement and I'm guessing ganun rin sa mga iba, sa ibang dairy animals since naglalactate ka nga so expected pag hindi mo na meet yung energy requirement maglo lower na or lower na yung uh, maglo lose weight ka na since uh, hindi mo na meet yung uh, energy requirement. So, um, may mga metabolic disease that will increase pag negative yung energy balance. So, during the first three weeks of lactation, dairy cows commonly have rates of negative energy balance. 
in the range of negative 5 to negative n cal per day. So, nasa negative na talaga yung uh, nakukuhang uh, energy ng animal, ng dairy animal, specifically so the, sa dairy cows. So, um, if negative yung energy balance, yung energy na nakukuha ng animal, the risk ng mga metabolic diseases with the kasi will increase kasi especially if negative may negative energy balance so maraming metabolic diseases diyan na pwedeng ma uh, makuha if negative yung uh, energy mo na nakukuha so Feed intake rather than milk production is generally the most limiting factor influencing energy balance in early lactation dairy cows. So yun, feed intake daw. And then, yung parang most limiting factor that will influence yung energy balance in early lactation dairy cows. So, mostly mga dairy cows, dairy goats, dairy buffaloes, they tend to eat less during yung sa lactation period. Um, uh, that is why it is generally the most limiting factor that will influence energy balance. Thus, may mga nutritional management ka na kailangan i-employ. May mga nutritional management strategies that uh, you need to employ, uh, employ that will result in a rapid increase in feed intake after calving. So, yun yung kailangan mong i-employ para uh, ma-benefit yung uh, both yung cow and both yung health ng cow at saka yung productivity productivity niya so basically in sa during yung lactation or after calving dapat mag-employ ka ng mga nutritional management strategies that could increase yung um, feed intake Kasi sinasabi dito that it, that it is the most limiting factor influencing energy. Hindi lang sa dairy cows, pwede rin sa dairy goats and dairy buffaloes. So kailangan na uh, parang stimulate mo na kumain, mag-feed intake yung mga dairy animals mo during this stage, during this time. Then, for fats naman, fat concentration in typical dairy diets without supplemental fat are usually low. Nasa 2.5% of dry matter lang. So, supplemental fats may be added to attain a total ration fat concentration of 6% of dry matter. So, to mga supplemental fat, it can be added para ma-increase yung energy concentration. Since, yun nga, Mababa yung energy concentration na nakukuha during lactation ng mga dairy animals. Yung supplemental fat, uh, it can be added para ma-attain yung total, uh, para ma-increase yung energy concentration. Pero usually, yung fat concentration lang nasa 2.5% of the dry matter. Mga ganun lang, percentage lang, maliit lang. And then if you add supplemental fat, nagiging 6% lang. So ganun lang yung um, 6% lang of the dry matter. So uh, yung mga fats may be supplemented from itong mga to vegetable sources such as yung oil, yung seed, uh, mga animal sources such as yung tallow, and specialty fat sources that are manufactured to be Roman inert na sinasabi. So Itong mga fats na to, pwede mong makuha sa mga vegetable sources or animal sources. So, when we say vegetable sources, nandito yung oil seeds. And when we say animal sources, nandun yung talaw. And then, you also have yung mga specialty fat sources na tinatawag that are manufactured to be Roman inert. So, when we say Roman inert, it does not interact with the metabolism of Roman microbes. So, hindi na may metabolize, hindi na da-digest, or hindi na cha-change yung fat if yung fat mo is Roman inert so when we say Roman inert in all it go uh, it does not interact with the metabolism of Roman microbes so basically kung ano if you supplement 
uh, a certain amount of fat that is from ro that is Roman inert hindi hindi na yun na may metabolize ng microbes meaning kung ano yung amount na nilagay mo na fat na Roman inert dun sa dairy animal yun rin yung inaabsorb niya kasi hindi hindi na ginagalaw ng uh, Roman microbes so in general when supplementing fats to daily diets up to 400 grams so 200% of diet, uh, diet dry matter may be added as vegetable fats particularly if the fats are added as oil seeds so mga nasa 400 grams 2% of the uh, dry matter diet and then an additional 200 to 400 gram may be added from highly saturated or preferably Roman inert sources, generally not to exceed a total of 6.5% fat in the total dietary dry matter. So, pwede rin na uh, mag-add ka uh, from the 400 grams, mag-add ka ng 200 to 400 grams if the diet uh, or if yung source mo ng fat ay uh, doon sa mga highly saturated or doon sa mga Roman inert na tinatawag. Pero uh, take into consideration that yung fat na binibigay mo sa mga dairy animals, it does not exceed a total of 6.5% doon sa total dietary dry matter niya. So yun. And then we go to protein. So the protein requirement of lactating dairy cows are high because of the demand for amino acids for milk production synthesis. So, this is also true to dairy goats and dairy buffaloes. Since they are both, all of them, all of the dairy animals are all producing milk. So, kailangan nila ng mataas na protein because sa mga dairy animals, Mataas yung demand for amino acids para makapag-produce ng milk protein. So, basically, uh, protein in ruminants are derived in two sources. So, dalawang sources yung pwedeng pagkuhanan ng uh, protein sa ruminants. So, this is parang yun yung advantage ng ruminants, I guess. So, you have RUP and RDP and I hope uh, you discuss this during your animal nutrition. So when we say RUP, Roman undegradable protein. And then when, when we say RDP, Roman degradable protein. So in Roman undegradable protein, as the name implies, it is not degraded. Undegradable siya dun sa mga Roman microbes. So hindi na utilize na mga Roman microbes yung mga bacteria, protozoa dun sa Roman if yung binigay mong protein is RUP or Roman undegradable protein. So basically, nababypass nitong RUP na to, itong protein na to, itong RUP na to, yung Roman, hindi siya nadadigest do doon, uh, nababypass niya yung Roman and then sa small intestine lang siya na naaabsorb. Doon lang siya nadadigest. So basically, yung parang advantage nitong Roman undegradable protein is that kung ano yung amount na binigay mo doon sa animal, yun rin yung inaabsorb niya. Kasi hindi na siya nade-degrade ng uh, Roman microbes. And then when we say RDP, these are Roman degradable proteins. So, ito, dinedegrade ito ng mga um, bacteria, yung mga protozoa na present doon sa Roman they degrade this protein, dinadigest nila, brine break down nila, and then they use this protein to make their own, to make their own protein. Kaya, yung tawag dito sa RDP, it is also called as microbial protein. Since dinadegrade ito ng mga microbes, in order to use as, um, as, in order to use for the production of their own protein. And then, yung protein na yun na naproduce ng mga microbes, yun na yung pwedeng i-absorb ng ruminan. Kaya tinatawag rin siya na microbial protein. So for RUP, tinatawag siya um, bypass protein. So, 
Dietary, dietary ingredients vary in their proportion of RUP and RDP. In general, feeds with high mo moisture and high protein concentration, like for example, legumes and silages, will have a high a proportion of RDP. In, co in contrast, feeds that have been processed and especially those that have undergone drying will have relatively high proportions of RUP. So, sinasabi lang dito na yung diets, dietary ingredients, nagvavaria ng proportion ng RUP and RDP. So, may mga iba't ibang feedstock na pinapakain mo that are high in RDP, such as yung mga um, feedstocks like legume silage that are high moisture and high protein, um, mataas yung uh, Roman degradable protein niya. And then yung mga processed feed, um, especially those that are un that undergone drying, will have relatively high proportion of RUP or Roman undegradable protein. Since uh, one of the parang processes na ginagawa nila uh, para makapag-produce ng bypass protein or Roman undegradable protein is uh, drying, may mga feed processing na ginagawa yan para makapag-produce ng RUP. And then you also have water. So, kailangan rin ng water. So, the availability of high quality water for ad libitum consumption is critical. Diba sabi natin kanina na ad libitum, yung mga dairy animals, dapat. So, kailangan ng availability ng high quality water. Kasi, uh, insufficient water intake uh, can lead to reduced feed intake and milk production. So, kailangan na kailangan itong water. So, water requirements of dairy cows are related to milk production, DMI, ration, dry matter concentration, salt or sodium intake, and then ambient temperature. So, yun yung mga uh, basically, yun yung parang factors that can um, influence yung water requirement for dairy cows. And again, this is also true to dairy goods and dairy buffaloes. So, uh, providing adequate access to water is critical to encourage maximal water intake. So, kailangan daw na may access yung uh, dairy animal to water. May easy access, access siya. So, water should be placed near feed sources and in milking parlor return alleys because most water is consumed in association, association with feeding or after milking. So, kailangan yung sources of water mo daw uh, katabi ng feeding area. Kasi during feeding, after feeding, uh, nagkukonsume yun, yung, yung animal ng water. Doon mo makikita na nagkukonsume ng water yung animal. And then, ilagay mo rin daw doon sa mga milking pa parlor return alley. So, pag nag-milk yung, uh, nag-undergo ng milking yung dairy animal, pag uh, babalik na siya doon sa, sa cage niya or sa, sa housing niya, dapat may available source ka ng water doon para doon siya uminom. Kasi um, um, parang frequently rin yung pag-inom ng mga animal during or after milking. So, yun. Then, Another nutrient or mineral na kailangan mong uh, sa alang-alang is calcium. So, calcium requirement of lactating dairy cows are high relative to other species or to non-lactating cows because of high calcium concentration. Again, this can also be applied to um, goats and dairy buffalo. So, Mataas talaga yung calcium requirement for lactating dairy cows. When compared to yung mga non-lactating cows. Kasi, dun sa milk, uh, it is high calcium concentration. So, kailangan niya ng maraming calcium para makapag-produce ng milk that have a high calcium concentration. So, Kailangan, since kailangan ng mataas na dairy, uh, ng dietary calcium dun sa mga um, feeds ng dairy animals, inorganic sources ng mga calcium, such as yung mga calcium carbonate, dicalcium phosphate, 
uh, it should be added to the ration of lactating dairy animals. So for the first 6 to 8 weeks daw of lactation, most dairy cows are in negative calcium balance. So just like in energy, ne nasa negative rin yung calcium balance ng uh, ng most dairy cows. Then for phosphorus, phosphorus nutrition uh, for lactating dairy cows has dynamics similar to those uh, of calcium. So, uh, parang ganun rin, high rin yung um, nutrient requirement for phosphorus during lactation. As in the case with calcium, most dairy cows in early lactation are in negative phosphorus balance. So, same with calcium dal, uh, negative phosphorus balance, so insufficient yung nakukuha nilang phosphorus. So, sinasabi dito that total dietary phosphorus concentration requirements for most daily diets will be in the range of 0.35% to 0.4% and for dry cows, nasa 0.3% to 0.35%. Then, phosphorus supplementation for dry cows is seldom necessary since medyo mababa yung concentration ng phosphorus na pwede mong ibigay or yung mababa lang yung nutrient requirement, kumbaga. Yung amount na kailangan mong ibigay during uh, sa phosphorus concentration. Pero, nag increase yan, katulad ng calcium. nag increase yung supplementation mo dapat ng uh, phosphorus during lactation. So, yon Those are the nutrients that you need to take into consideration when um, when involved in the feeding of dairy animals. So, yon So, with that, I will continue my discussion uh, on the next video lecture on the feedings and the nutrient requirements, mga feeding na kailangan on dairy animals. So, uh, let's end pe lang here. So, I hope you will have the time to go over it. You will have the time to listen to it and then you will have the time to review it. So, with that, thank you for listening and have a good day.